Hello, my name is John Hartledge. Welcome to my channel. I am about to take you on a tasting experience to España. And of course, when I hear España, I have one thing to say. Are you not entertained? Let's chat wine. So whenever I travel in an episode to Spain, I know it's an opportunity to pronounce Spanish names. That's just fun. So here we go. Bodegas Luzon. See where that accent is? It's L-U-Z-O, accent grave. That's the one that's the ski slope, ski slope going down left to right. Luzon, that's just an accent on there. So it's Bodegas Luzon, and it's from Jumilla. J-U-M-I-L-L-A, and that J is almost like a Y. Humilla, and you do two L's like that, they become like a Y. The grape type, monastre. It looks like monastrel with the two L's. No, it's monastre. And monastre is another name for the grape called Morvedre. And that is Southeast France, from one of my favorite areas, of course, from the Rhone Valley, France. So we'll look at provenance. Let's look at grapes from other areas. More typically, Morvedre, or this grape, is known from being Southeast France. And actually um, uh, 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 used many, many times as a blending grape in the Southeast of Rhone. And I've had the grape before, but I don't remember having Monastre, that same grape from this area in Southeast Spain. And what caught my eye were a couple of things. $9 retail, okay? This hasn't happened in a while. $9 retail delivering what I think this wine's going to deliver. 14.5% ABV or alcohol by volume. So that implies very ripe fruit um, high elevations uh, in this area. High elevations means that's a chance for the roots to grow deeper and for soil, the soil to be above water so the water drains through that soil. So what do we do? We stress the grapes. And that means we have big fruit and we end up with a little extra alcohol. So 14 and above usually means more ripening. So I'm ha I have a feeling this is going to deliver a lot in the glass. The glass I have here is the typical shape I would use for this. Um, I think this is gonna be a little more dense than Chianti, uh, but there's a, just this little bit of almost Chianti type shape to the glass, but I'm kind of intensifying the aromatic a little with this, with this type of glass, okay? So let's open it up and let's see what happens. Again, that foil just slipped right off. I don't know what foils are, uh, the, the, like the whole, you can't really tell what the, uh, conglomeration is, whether there's some plastic in it, whether it's tin, and depending on the, the makeup, sometimes they really can give you a bad cut. So I just say, uh, if you can, I just take the whole foil off. And I know, you know, the the romance of, of slicing around the rim and taking it off neatly, but it doesn't always slice nicely anymore. Ever since lead in 1990 was taken out of, and rightfully so, taken out of capsules. It's just not as pliable. So, here we go. Luzon, Bodegas, Bodegas Luzon. And this is a 2017 vintage. So vintage, of course, referring to when the grapes were picked or harvested. So they were grown in the year 2017, harvested in the fall. Once ripe enough, not the year, but the vintage. In this case, they describe this as a joven wine. Vinho Joven, or Young in Spanish, J-O-V-E-N. So I'm sure they didn't do a whole lot as far as aging uh, in barrel, but I think it had a good, you know, six months, uh, and it was certainly stabilized for a little bit because it wasn't really released. This 2017 wasn't released till um, February of 2020. So it had at least a couple years before sitting in bottle, sitting in barrel a little bit. Uh, but let's see, oh. Nice, and a totally real, complete cork. 
So I'm noticing on the cork, just a smidge of, what I want to say, what's the what's the term that I should use best? There's a little bit of a sherry-esque thing on the nose and not necessarily bad. There's a little bit of wine smell. Oh, look at the color. So I'm not alert, alarmed because I don't smell cork. That's good, it's more of a neutral, but there is just this little, hmm, a little old wine smell, which I don't get from this color. I mean, this is dense and strong, big wine. We're gonna do Bernoulli's principle on this for sure, but let's taste it first. So more Vedra. Always a grape for me that, that conjures a little earth. Uh, in this case, they did an extended contact with all of the skins and the uh, and the the stalks of the wine uh, and of the grapes, so that uh, adds a little more fullness and richness. I am wondering if there might be a little bit of a taste of carbonic maceration, like like in Beaujolais, just to, that they wanted to bring out the fruit in the forward. But let's see what happens in the taste. Hmm. is excellent. It's a unique, I'm going to say unique. I can't really say this is like, feels like Syrah, feels like Grenache. It's somewhere between for me, it's got the density, like dark fruit of a Syrah, but it's got the vibrancy almost of a, of a Grenache. So it really does hit that, what I think is that Southeast France Rhone style, uh, Rhone style feel. Let's do a little bit of Bernoulli's. I'm going to use my schnozzle specific glass here. Let's see where we go. <laughs> Why do I giggle every time? Because I know that I'm aging the wine before I serve it. I am infusing oxygen. Oh, yes, there it is. With Bernoulli's principle, a little bit of inertia. Mm, love it. Now let's taste, see what that did. I can already tell it rounded it a little, it softened it. Mm. So now I get a little spice. Mm. There's plenty of structuring tannin on the on the palate, so it feels like it's got support. But there's also an elegance. At $9 range, $8 to $10 range, this is such a good value. It's so versatile. I think I would have this with, I mean, this will stand up to a roasted dish. Uh, certainly a, if you went vegetarian, roasted mushrooms, but uh, roasted, uh, roasted chicken, the poultry, I think it would stand up to uh, something gamey like venison. But wow, an excellent bottle of wine. This is the kind of value that I think people are always looking for on an everyday basis. You don't think twice about opening something like that. You know there's not a, that much of a, of a risk of, what is it, $9 for a real nice bottle of wine? Excellent. Whew. That is what I call a tasting success. Come see me again. Let's chat on. Mm. Mm. I love to spend a couple days at that bodegas. Mm be a good time. It's rolling and we are filming in three, two. Hello again. I had to do a quick follow-up. So after the crew left in the evening, I decided to revisit the bottle. So you remember early in the video when I first opened the bottle of Luzon uh, Monastrel, you know, the American, Americanized version of that Spanish word, when I opened the bottle, remember I said that it had a little bit of an old wine smell. This is something that happens. There is bottle variation, especially with old world wines, quality wines, and real cork. So it can happen for a lot of reasons, but it turns out that little aromatic that I got, because I revisited, is one of the common wine faults, and it's a fault known as madderization. And the form of the, the word is from Madeira. There's an island in the Atlantic. And there was this type of wine that's still produced today that in the process has a little bit of heating in the process because of the way the style developed. We'll certainly do an episode on Madeira. But when you smell that, it's almost like a slight bit of taint, like burnt uh, wine or burnt wood. Uh, there's just a little bit of an off kind of aromatic 
um, I call it, you call it matterization. And sure enough, in the glass, yeah, yeah, it's just like there's something old about it. It's not quite oxidation, not like sherry. It's different. I opened a second bottle. Perfect. I took the other bottle back to the store. They gave me a replacement. And every good retailer would do that. Have no fear. Look at even the cork. So you look on a close up. The cork, see the color? That was the one that was matterized. And that's the one that uh, was more fresh. Boom. Fresh one, all fruit. Do not be afraid. Put the cork right back on that bottle. Take it in and tell them, sorry, it was matterized. There's something off about it. Can I have another bottle? A good retailer will always replace it. Come back and see me again. Let's chat wine.